One thing I noticed from the literature related to metacognition was this interesting phenomenon of first person and third person perspective that there is a unique difference between subjective and objective conscious perspective. Nelson and Narns identify this as the two counterbalancing conscious forms that sort of interact together to produce metacognition. So there is this outward facing subjective consciousness that is subsumed in the moment. It's the consciousness of feelings and sensations and choices. It is the now of our constrained existence. But then there is this interfacing objective consciousness that is full of memories and abstractions that are unbounded but fleeting. It is an internal consciousness of thoughts and possibility. Metacognition occurs as a kind of interaction between these kinds of consciousness. And I noticed that we see something similar in written expression with first person and third person narrative voice. And if this is true, then metacognition would essentially be akin to second person narrative voice. And that is a dialogue between at least two people. Now this is an apt and powerful metaphor for how metacognition is working in real time in the brain. It is an active communication between subjective and objective consciousnesses that can be identified using an MRI or other scientific approach to studying the brain. But the big idea is that metacognition can be thought of as a dialogue, a dialogue between the areas of the brain that are experiencing this moment and the parts of the brain that are thinking about stuff, possibly unrelated to this moment, but in reflection. And this can be helpful in getting someone to understand what they are doing when they engage in metacognition realizing that it's an interaction that they are doing, a balance between what you're abstractly doing in your head and the actions that you are taking in your environment. It's not to be confused with habit, but you're doing it when you are willfully forming a habit. It's not operant conditioning, but if you know what operant conditioning is, you can use that knowledge to reward and establish new behaviors in yourself. This is a dichotomy that helps delineate the metacognitive pedagogical approach behind discourse at a fundamental neuropsychological level. But I'll cover that more deeply in a future video.